Hey everyone, thanks for learning to play games. My name is Lance, and today I'm looking at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called the Mariana Trench. This is a brand new game by Bright Light Games. It is a one to two player game that takes roughly 10 to 15 minutes to play and is a competitive head to head game. In the game itself, you're going to take control of one of these submersible subs diving down into the Mariana Trench and coming into contact with all different kinds of sea life. Each time you come into contact with one, it might attack you, and once you resolve that effect, then you will have to make a choice you can either add it to your sub for benefits and upgrades, or you can collect it that'll get you points in the end of the game based on the number of different types of cards you have and also the sets of cards you have in certain types. You're also going to dive down to the bottom of the Mariana Trench where you'll be able to collect a research token and bring that back up surface side to the research vessel. At the end of the game, once that is triggered, each player is going to total up the amount of points that they have based on the cards they've collected and the tokens that they received, and the player that has the most points will be the overall winner at the end of the game. There's also a solo mode included so you can test your luck against your previous scores and see if you can outdo yourself. So as always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribe to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and produce this content. If you want to stay updated on all my videos, also considering that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table and I'll show you what this one's all about. The first thing I want to go over are some of the different cards included in the game. So there will be two different subs included, the frogfish and the shrimp, and each one of them have the same stats. Each one can hold one charge that they'll use to fight off the cephalopods, and they have a spot to hold one research token. Then each sub has three different stats, its hold size, its maximum movement, and its radar. And you'll be able to upgrade all three of these stats throughout the game. And then each sub has a number of hit points or rivets. Then we have the th four different types of fish that are included as well. You have the epipelagic, sharks, cephalopods, and deep sea fish. Each one of these cards is broken down into two sections. Each one can be collected and up used to upgrade one of your stats on your ship. Or on the other side, you can collect it for its class type, and it'll also list the size of that fish. So you must have a hold that holds that size fish in order to capture it. The three classes, Deep Sea, Epipelagic, and Sharks, all work the same way, and none of them will do damage to your ship when it's revealed. The final one, the Cephalopods, will attack your ship the first time they're revealed and will do one damage hitting one of your rivets unless you can spend your charge in which case then they won't do damage and then you can simply collect them like any other fish. The game is going to continue with players moving back and forth up and down the trench and collecting fish and research tokens until the oxygen levels start coming out. This will count down and when the final one comes out, the oxygen one, the game is over and the players will total up their points and whoever has the most points will be the winner of the game. I also get to show you one of the first stretch goals slash expansions plans for the game, and this is Creatures from the Deep. This expansion is going to include four wild creatures that you can use either to build a research station, which allow you to gain an extra research token if you spend an extra turn at the bottom of the sea, or you can use them as a wild at the end of the game, which will count for any type of sea life. Then there's also going to be six monsters that are included in this, and each one of these monsters will have a special effect that you resolve when revealed. And these will range from eating off one of your upgrades that you've built onto your sub, or dragging you down to the bottom, or even eating other creatures that are in the sea. The last thing I want to show you is a game in action. And before I get into that, I want to mention that all the materials you see here are prototype materials and are subject to change. And the mat is also going to be separate. It'll be a separate purchase, but it's a beautiful mat, so I definitely wanted to use it. I love the theme of this, and I love the artwork with this one. It really pops and makes the game stand out. So with that being said, this is a filler game, very easy to learn and teach. It is a very simple game, and so the first thing you're going to do is choose one of the players to go first. So I'm going to have my green player go first, and during a player's turn, that player is going to choose to move down or up in one direction a number of spaces based on its movement. In the beginning of the game, you have a movement of one to two spaces. So you'll choose how far you want to go down, or once you reach a certain spot, you can also return to the surface. So with my player, I'm going to go ahead and move down two spaces. And then once you do, you're going to reveal the card and resolve its effects. 
So if it is a cephalopod, then it will attack your sub. If not, then you have a choice. You can either collect it for its upgrade value, or you can collect it to add to your collection and receive points for it. One thing I do want to point out is if you collect it for its upgrade, it will not count as points at the end of the game. So with this one, my player is going to choose to collect it, and it does his hold does have that capacity. He can hold one small fish at the moment, so he will go ahead and add that to his section on the right side. From there, his turn is done, and the cards will move down, and a new card will be added to the top. Then it'll move over to the next player to take their turn. With my player over here, I'm going to just move down one space and reveal that card. So with that one, it is a shark, and it is a large fish, so he cannot collect that for its, its fish type. He could collect it to boost his radar, so he's going to go ahead and do that and add it to his upgrade side. So now he has a radar, which will allow him at any point during his turn to scan above and below his current position. Then we'll add a card, and it'll move back over to my green player, who again is going to move down two spaces and reveal this card down here. So this time it is a cephalopod, so it is going to attack, but he is going to negate that with his charge token. So he'll add it back up here. He will not take damage for that, and then he has a choice. Again, he can collect it or use it as an upgrade. He is going to leave that one there, and so his turn is over. Now, if you leave a fish, this, uh, especially a cephalopod, it will not attack during any other turn, and other players can collect it if they're able to. Moving back over to my other player, that player is going to move down too and reveal this card. Another cephalopod. It's a giant squid. So again, he is also going to use his charge token and not take damage. And he will use that as an upgrade, so he'll slide that under his section. These will move down and a new one will come out. From there, it's going to move back over to my green player, who is going to move down to the bottom of the trench and collect a research token. Now, you're only allowed to collect one research token at a time, and then you must return to the surface to be able to empty that from your hull. Moving back over to the shrimp, that player is also going to move down too and collect a research token. From there, it's going to move over to my frogfish player. Again, they're going to move up two spaces and reveal a card. And it is a angler fish. So with this one, he is going to collect it as an upgrade as his hull is full at this point. And then we'll move these down and add a new card. Back over to the shrimp. He's going to move up three spaces, one, two, three, as he has that upgrade now. And he also has to reveal, which is a great white. He has already upgraded his thing, so he cannot collect it for that. And his hull is also full or cannot hold a large fish yet, as he has not upgraded that, so he cannot collect it either. So his turn is over, then it is back to my frogfish, who is going to move up three spaces. Once he moves up to the top, he'll go ahead and place that token and empty his hull out at the surface. Now, in order to get the charge back, you have to spend an entire turn collecting that. So he could waste the turn his next go around to collect that if he wanted to. From there, it's going to move back over to the shrimp, who's going to move up all the way as well, and he will also place his research token. Over to my frog player, or the frogfish, he is going to go ahead and move, and I'm going to go ahead and go right back down to the third spot and reveal. It's another shark, so again, with this one, he can collect it and increase his hull size, so he is going to do that. And then we'll move these down and place that there. Over to the shrimp, he is going to spend his turn getting his charge back. Back over to the frogfish, he's going to go ahead and move down and collect the token. And then it'll move back over to my player here. The shrimp is going to move down two and reveal this one. And it is a sailfish, so he is going to go ahead and collect that for his hull. And this one will move down. Going back over to the frogfish, he is going to move up two spaces and he's going to collect that shark and add it to his hull as he has that increased capacity now. And then these will move down and over. And then the shrimp will go. We'll move down three and collect that token. Back over to my frogfish player, he's going to move up three 
And again, Doc, placing those two. Back over to the shrimp, who's gonna go. And at this point, I'm gonna take a few turns off camera and then we'll come back towards the end of the game and I'll show you how the end of the game works. All right, so we're closing, closing in on the end of the game here. It's back over to my green player who is going to move up. And he's gonna go ahead and end there. Back over to yellow who's gonna descend and get that research token. Back up to green who's gonna finish off placing those. Over to yellow, who is going to move up three and then there. Back to green, one, two, and three. And another cephalopod. So he doesn't have a charge, so he is going to take a damage, but then he will collect that as well. This will move down and end the game. So at that point, both ships are going to return to the surface and they will be able to place all their cargo that they've collected in their areas. And I'm just gonna go ahead and close these over because the upgrades do not count. So then that'll go there. And then he's back up top. So first off, I'll start with green. We are going to get two points per research token that he collected. He's going to reduce that by two points for each rivet that he took damage from. So I'm just gonna remove one for that. So he's got six points there. And then he's going to collect a number of points based on the sets and the different kinds that he has. So he has two cephalopods. And he's got some deep sea fish. All right. So first off, he's going to get a number of points for each set or four of a kind that he has. So he has seven points because he gets all four of them. If he had another set, he would get another one of those as well. So that's seven points, and then he is going to get two points for the two of the kind, and two points for the two of a kind there. So that's another four for 11. And then he also has two more for another set of two of a kind. So that's 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 points for green. Then we'll move over to yellow. So yellow has four research tokens. So that's eight points there. And then let's see how he did with his fish. So he's got three and only one. So he's not gonna get any of the big points. He'll get two for two of a kind. So that brings him up to 10. And then he has a run of three, which is gonna get him another four points for 14. So the green player was the winner with 19 points. And at this point, then you can set up and play again if you want to. Well, I hope you found that video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it. And I take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, I'll see you later.